Today I'm going to be trying to get the heater core out of here. This is a 73 240Z. And when I got the car, it had been parked for a long time, but the heater hoses out in the engine bay were blocked off. And I asked the owner, I said, is the heater core leaking? He said, yeah, it is. That's why they're blocked off, which is what I suspected. So anyway, just looking under here, it looks like the heater core is back up under here, about the worst possible place for getting to it. Um, so I haven't done this before, so we'll be figuring this out together. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is take this uh, heater blower motor assembly, this whole thing out of here. It looks like there's uh, a, two bolts up there, and I can see one bolt back here, there may be another one up above. So I'll pull those three bolts out, See if this will just drop down out of the way. That'll be a start. All right, everything's loose now. I just got to pull it loose from right up there. Oops, I got to take this electrical connector off first right here. Okay. Now that's out of there. And the heater core is right in there. All right, I think maybe this whole assembly will come out of here. I see one screw right there. I see another screw right up here. And looking across the way, I can see at least one on that, that side. So there's probably a couple over there. And if I take this cable off right here, uh, maybe this whole thing will come out this way. That's, that's what I'm gonna try. Okay, coming in from the driver's side now, there's two um, cables you gotta pull off, one right here and another one right up here. I've already pulled them both off. Then I've got two bolts, one right up here, and then there's another one up top here. So let me get those pulled out. I don't want to come. I found another bolt in here. Right in there, if you can see it. Okay, I'm back on the passenger side now. There's another bolt right in there kind of the same place the other one was on the other side. Okay, just looking up there. Looks like there's some duct work that's got to come loose before I can slide that thing out of there. Plus right here, the radio bracket, what have you, it's kind of right up against it. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is pull all of this stuff out here a little bit. At least get that duct work loosened up from back here. If I can pull the radio and stuff out a little bit, maybe it'll have more room to slide that out. Now I think all I have to do is disconnect this cable from this um, blower motor housing and I think this will come on out then. Okay, now I can get this piece of duct out of the way. Okay, you see this brace here? This little support rod? 
that's when I try to pull this over, it's hitting right here. And this thing I can't move out of the way because it's welded here and it's welded up there. So that's real nice. So maybe I've got to go out the other side, but I don't think there's room. Okay, there's no way it's coming out on the driver's side because the steering column is in the way. So I think what I have to do is take these screws out here all the way around this piece. And if I get that out of the way, I think it'll come out. Well, that was a lot of work to get this thing out, but in the middle of the winter when it's freezing cold, it'll be nice to have a heater. So I guess it's worth uh, spending a few hours now, but I don't feel too bad about it because I was gonna switch out that radio. Uh, that's an old cassette player. Kind of tells you how long ago this car was kind of put together. And then also the, the little sliding heater controls were not operating that smoothly so i need to take that out and get those freed up i don't really see much evidence of a leak there was no stains or anything real obvious however there is a little bit of corrosion right here on this piece so maybe it's leaking out of the control valve and not the heater core at all Oh, I see. This is a little clip. Okay. There we go. Yeah, actually, the heater core looks really good. I don't see any evidence anywhere that it was leaking, but I'll uh, stick it down in a bucket of water and blow some air through it and, you know, pressurize it about 5 PSI or so, see if there's any leaks. And that'll also identify if there's a leak in the valve here. Well, if it's just the valve, I could have uh, changed that out without pulling all this out. But that's okay. Like I said, I wanted to get that center console stuff out of there to work on it anyway. Okay, what I've got here, I put a cap on here. I've got a um, air fitting quick disconnect bib tied in here. I've got the compressor, my regulator dialed down to about 7 PSI. So I'm going to hook this on here and spray a little soapy water around here see if oh yeah look at that see those bubbles all over the place so it's leaking right around this uh, temperature control valve So that's good. I'll go ahead and spray a little on the radiator core here. Oh, well, I can see a leak up here too. So we got double problems. Right here's a little, little leak. Right here's a little leak. Right here's a little leak. All up and down here it's leaking. Right there's a little leak. Right here. So we got multiple areas. So I think I need a new heater core and 
right there. It's leaking a little bit. New heater core and a new temperature control valve. Okay, here's where I'm at on this thing. Unfortunately, they quit making these heater cores for the 240Zs about 20 years ago. And apparently all of the excess stock that was on hand has been used up. I can't find one anywhere. If I can find some used ones, they say they're good, but I'm afraid that they're going to be in the same shape this one is. If they're used, they're, they're getting rotten. So what I was able to do is go online and search a jillion different heater cores. And I found this one, which is out of a early 80s Mazda pickup. And you can see it's more or less kind of the same size, a little bit taller, but got to kind of a inlet over here and an outlet over here. So what I think I can do is, is uh, adapt the way this one will fit in here. Maybe have to change the angle of these guys a little bit. Maybe pull this one out, stick it in here and make it work. See, this is sticking up a little bit too high, but there's a little indented area here that I can uh, flatten out. And then same thing on the lid that holds it in place. Got a little indented area here that I can flatten out. So I'll be able to get this one in there okay. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and do to make this work. Okay, I'm about, this is about a quarter inch below this surface. what I'm going to do is heat this up and see how easy it'll slide out of there and then maybe I can substitute this one in for that one. Now, see if this one will come out. not have to rotate this at all. So what I'm going to do now is either cut this off and get it stuck in there or cut this off right here, get it soldered back in there. Okay, I've got a, ended up needing 3 16 of an inch spacer right underneath the valve. I got my new valve just to make sure it's the same as the other one. I don't want to have, find out there's some difference after I get everything modified. And the uh, Heater core can just set in there just like that. I can put a little small piece of hose here to connect those two. Right, so I think I can go ahead and solder this one in now. Um, and then I've got to uh, fill up the gap between this side of the core and uh, the body of the housing over here. Okay, I've cleaned this area real good with some fine emery paper. Um, same thing on the nipple here. 
I've got some of this stuff. It's a fluxin solder. It's real good for sweat soldering joints like this. Just put a little on here. Put a little around here. And then I want about this much stuck in there. That's about how much the other one was. So I'll just wiggle it down in there until I get to that depth. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Pretty straight coming right out of there. Now I'll put a little heat on it. I may have to feed it a little bit of solder. And I'm going to apply most of the heat to the nipple here itself. <laughs> Looks pretty good, I think. Nice bead of solder all the way around there. Okay, I've got this one plugged off. I've got this one that's gonna go right in here. I got seven pounds of CSI air coming out of there. No leaks around there. So I'm just gonna spray some all over the place. Make sure I don't see any leaks anywhere else. Okay, it all looks good. All right, here's what I've got. I've got this in the position where it needs to be. That's in the right location. I had determined that this needed to be three and three eighths over from the this other wall here. So about right there. So you can see this gap here. I need to fill in with something. I just got this piece that I bent, pop riveted in here. It rivets down the side here. So that'll keep it in position back and forth this way. I just made this piece that um, it's gonna slide, if I can hold it properly, right in here. like that and I'll come in here and drill some holes and rivet it in place okay I've got that piece all riveted in and I set this in place this is gonna right where it's gonna go I'll be able to put my hose from here to here no problem um, this is where it was in the original position so what I'll do now is um, just seal all the edges and across the top and bottom uh, with something what it had in the original um, core was just stuff like this just some foam rubber with some vinyl upholstery material or something across the edge of it across the surface so i'll just do something similar that'll hold it nice and snug and seal it all the way around Okay, time to do a little cosmetic work now. I just got both of these pieces washed up real good. And I put a few little spot wells where this 
um, little protrusion or indention, whatever you want to call it, in this piece got cut and flattened out. So now I'm going to take some of this seam sealer. This is just regular automotive body seam sealer and kind of put a little bit on here. This is a little lacquer thinner I've got right here. Kind of smooth it out a little bit. Okay, that'll be okay. Like I say, it's gonna get painted. Once it's back in the car, nobody's ever gonna see this anyway. Okay, the paint's dry now, so I've got to do a few things before I can put the core in here. Uh, this little trap door here that opens and closes the cavity for the air from the blower motor to come in here. When it's like this, um, it kind of seals it off. When it's open like this, it allows the blower motor, which attaches right here and blows in here, Air will come down through the heater core and out these vents on either side to supply warm air to the uh, cabin area. But this little door here um, had some thin quarter inch foam with some uh, uh, vinyl material on the outer skins to kind of act like a seal so that when this shuts, kind of seals that off. This foam is getting pretty uh, rotten, it's kind of powdery. So what I think I can do is just take a piece of vinyl, it uh, doesn't need to be very thick, and I'll put that on here, and that should make a seal. I'll put some of this on both sides. Okay, now I need to <clears throat> put a little strip of insulation right here and right here, just something to seal those joints. And I've got some of this 16th inch felt uh, with an adhesive back on it. I'll just cut a couple of little thin strips to lay right in there. So it sets just like that. So I've got to have some foam across the top here and across the bottom. So what I'm going to put for that is some of this scrim backed upholstery foam. It's got some kind of a fabric on one side and it's just foam rubber on the other side. So I'm going to put a piece of that down below and up above. Uh, that's similar to what it had, what the old core had on it. Okay, it looks like all that will compress down real nice. Hold it nice and snug. So now I can take and stuff some foam down in that pocket to seal that. Okay, I put my screws in here.
Okay, I've got to hook this little piece of linkage back up to the door here. So now those doors open and shut properly. A little spacer that I made for that. Well, I think I'm done. I put a piece of uh, aluminum foil tape over this opening here just to seal that off. Make sure it's sealed off good. And the uh, temperature control valves in its original location. About the only difference is this little section of hose is not quite as long as the original. Because if you recall in the original, this little elbow came out way down here. So I had a little longer hose in there, but that'll work fine. Inside here, you can see the new core down in there. It's all sealed off with that foam. I put some foam around here so that the mating part will seal around that. So now it's time to Put this back in the car and I'm not going to show you all that. It'll be basically the reverse of how it came out. 